Hi guys and welcome to Student Database Management System developed using MySQL using Visual Basic. Alright guys, now let me show you guys how this works. Right here the details of Paul Loman and that's me, it's right in here. Now, those details that I've just shown to you guys on the data grid view, right there, there they are. I'm also going to show it to you guys on the database itself or in the database itself. So let's open up the database. That is the database that I created for the project. So if I come in here now, so let's click on the table so that we can view the table. There, that's the table. As you can see, those are the details of Paul Lumen that is on the system itself. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on reset and let's enter new data. So let's say that's the student details and this very student, his name is Tony Montana. Let's bring it down. And I'm just going to speed up the rest of the details of Montana. Okay, we have the details of Tony Montana in place, so let's go for the course that is actually taken. Click on that and let's select computer science for Tony Montana. And he happens to be, let's say, an overseas student and is staying in one of the accommodations. He is on exchange program and that is a scholarship and there has a second year. Right now let's come in here subject taking c sharp and here we need to enter what was called in there database and system analysis come down in here artificial intelligence web development object oriented programming and Raspberry Pi finally animation there we go so as you can see I've entered 900 plus in there so the system automatically deleted look at that once I move away from there it's now going to be acceptable so let's enter a value between 100 in there there and that is it the system automatically calculate everything and this is just to double check there we go so it's a first class student okay if we go in here you will notice tony montana's details is not there so to get tony montana's details on the data review all we need to do is to click on add new and this message box display that is successfully added click on ok let's go in there and that is it those are Tony Montana's details okay now let's go straight to our database that is the database to view Tony Montana's details in here we're going to have to refresh click on refresh and that's it that's Tony Montana's details in there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you guys straight into Visual Basic Development Environment. I will put one of these together. Let's do that now, guys. And let's start a new project, guys. I'm going to click on Create New Project. Select Visual Basic and then click on Next. Let's give a project name. I'm going to call it VB underscore student underscore my sql db there and i'm going to click on next and then let's click on create okay my visual basic development environment is ready so let's go straight to the properties make sure your form is selected click on properties if you can't see your properties or any of these tabs here all you need to do is to go to windows here and just select reset window layout and then click on yes there we go 
and your toolbox everything will appear as well okay what i want to do now is for my form i'm going to change the size increase the size of that very form to 1000 let's go for 1390 by 800 there done the next thing that i'm going to do now is click on that pin just to hide it i'm going to go straight to the tools here uh, right inside the tools what i need now is the tab control let's come scroll right down that is your tab control there you can double click or you can just click and drag just to position it how you want and i'm just going to extend the tab that much bring this here and this down as well I think that is good enough for my tab so I'm going to go straight to the properties for this tab and right here you see where we have tab page or pages click on that and click on these three dots and the very first tab here I want to give that a name so I'm going to scroll right down let's look for the name there the text that will be on it there we go and i'm going to change that very text to students database something like that and the second one i'm going to change that to this the choice is here so i'm just going to make that university data you know let's say university database and click on ok there if you want the choice is yours if you want to add more tabs all you need to do is to just click on add there we go that's tab number three as you can see right there i don't need that so i'm gonna get rid of it click on ok there we go now let's come to tab number two let's sort out number two straight away on this tab number two i'm going to add data grid view so let's come right here you should be able to see one there we go that is it data grid view right there okay just drag it out much now let's go to the very first tab which is the oh that is the student database click on the student database and in here the first thing i want to do for this very student database i'm going to add a panel there just drag that panel that much and uh, maybe i should even change the size of this very panel let's come in here to the properties i'm going to make that maybe 400 plus and i can just copy it across 463 by there we go 332 that is fine grab this very panel just place it right here somewhere there there now I'm going to change the color of that very panel as well. Let's go straight to the color and I'm going to make that control background color instead of transparent. Let's make it control. There we go. Now I can copy this very panel and just use it to populate the others. Hold on to your control click drag. I have one here. Okay, let's enhance the look of these panels select this very one the one in the middle there yeah that is fine okay this very panel here i'm going to drag it up a little bit and just increase the size of this there uh i might as let's let's copy these two panels just copy this control click drag yeah that is fine and I'm also going to copy with one here okay let's add one more panel here so I'm going to click on this and just hold on to my control click and drag it down yeah that much and now we increase the size of that to about 400 plus here yeah, the, the length four five seven yeah let's see okay so we're gonna need two more panels in here all right 
it's looking good so let's copy this verif panel hold on to the control click and drag just drag it along now I'm going to change the back color top page one I'm going to come in here and change that to cadet blue so that should makes it look a little bit pronounced yeah there we go now let's copy this and there we go now bring one in here this is the copied one all right and this very one now i'm going to change the color as well let's change that to cadet blue as well there okay so my interface is looking much better now let's come in to back to the tools here i need buttons grab and just draw have one here okay and let's change the fonts to let's just call that add new so for those who are beginners this is a very good tutorial because I'm actually showing this every single process so the name of that right up here I'm going to change that to add bt and add new and I will also change the font let's come back in here and just change the font to something a little bit readable I'm going to come in here let's say maybe about 20 and let's see just hold on to your control click and drag it now copy we have two and I'm going to need two more okay and let's change the text of the other buttons so I'm going to change this one to reset this is going to be changed to we we'll go for result and here we we'll change that to exit there all right now let's come back to the toolbox here and i'm going to grab the following so let's come in here grab a label place one label here and that very label we change the size or the font size of that very label let's change it to something a little bit readable maybe we'll go for maybe about 20 come in here drop it down and just change that to 18 instead of 20 18 regular and the data on that is going to be known as let's change that to home student there and we also need a combo box there we go draw a combo box right there it's about that much and that very combo box change the size of that to 18 regular as well click on ok and now let's copy this cross or we'll select both components click and drag we have two now make that four okay all done and now let's do the same thing for this other one here i'm going to grab that just grab this one here paste it here and then I'm going to change the data that it's on there to BA Bachelor of Art and copy that but before then let's come back in here I need a number up and down the component called number up and down let's look for it and somewhere here there we go that's it just draw that here and that is it so increase the font size to about 18 as well 18 regular there select both components and just copy it across and I'm going to change the text content on each one now this very one is going to be make sure the label is selected we'll change the text right this is going to be BSC this other one that is going to be master of art 
Master of Science, the next one. And um, finally, we have Doctor, PhD, Doctorate of Psychology. There we go. And here, let's change this one as well. That is going to be known as scholarship. We have exchange, exchange student, or we'll just enter exchange in there. And this is going to be accommodation. And right here, that is going to be overseas students. Yeah. Okay. Now that has taken shape. All right. Let's do one thing. Come right here again. I need the the calendar. I think there's something here called month calendar. So I'm gonna grab that and right up here. I'm just gonna paste that right in here. Month calendar. And that takes care of that. Yeah, that's fine. Let's leave it here somewhere. Okay, there's one thing. Let's add the week. There's some weeks here. One of the properties is known as it weeks. And that is it right here. Show week number. So I'm going to make that true. There we go. Look at that. That's a week number to the left. Okay, that's that's fine. I like that. All right, the next thing we want to do is now let's grab some combo box here as well. Combo box and a label, really. Okay, hold on to that and just drag it here. I need labels as well. Grab this label, drop it there. And I'm going to put a border around that very label that I've just dropped in there. Let's come to border here. There we go. And the text content of that, I'm going to change that to number. Yeah. And let's, let's copy that. Copy that very label. All right, I'm going to now change the font of that very label. Let's come down here and change that to... Select a subject. There. And this other one here, I'm going to change that to score. Right. So I'm just going to position everything properly now. And I may have to reduce the font size really. Okay, I'm going to make the font size for these labels. Let's change that to about 14. And repeat the same thing for this very one. There. Okay. So we can now just put a bit of space in between. And this very one as well. Select that and change that to about 14 as well. Okay. All right, we can then copy everything across now. Uh, before the copying, I'm gonna need a text box here. Click, drag and drop. One here. Then grab a text box first. I'm showing the whole process because of the new beginners so that they will understand what's going on. So let's change that to 14 as well. Okay, that's fine. Change this one, this very one to number one. Subject number one. There. So let's copy it across now. Click, drag. Hold on to your control while you do that. And you just click and drag. Be the same thing now. We need eight. Okay, guys, let's speed up the whole process here. I'm going to copy this again. Just bring it down. 
that we will use that just to display the score and so on so let's paste that right there okay and I'm going to extend it that much something like that and now let's change the data that we have in here all right this very one is going to be known as total score For those of you who understand the whole process, you can always speed up the interface design. Right, so that's one down. And let's get rid of the text content that we have in here. And this is going to become LBL total score. done and this very one I'm gonna get rid of the let's come into the border style and just make that none there okay that's fine now I need two more just select that there we go that's it and this one is gonna be known as ranking I would call the next one here that's just going to be the date right and let's change the name of the other label that is going to be known as LBL ranking and finally this one will be known as LBL date there we go that's it done so I'm just changing the numbers in or on each of the labels so this one is going to be eight there and the next thing is I'm going to give all of these a name so that's going to be known as let's come in and just change that to CBO I think we should call that CBO model That would be one model one. Okay, why this one would be called TST score one? TST score one. There, so let's speed that up. Okay, guys, let's design the this other part. Let's just come in here I'm going to copy this control let's copy this here yeah, just move that up there yeah we need one here and we're going to need one here as well okay so let's do this here let's move that somewhere here and we're going to need some text box as well so first of all let's just align this a little bit and I'm just going to copy that we have two and we have four then we're going to need one more for there there and here we're going to need about five more let's do that again right and right below we need maybe about five more there as well okay guys all done so what I'm going to do now is I just need to add some data in here okay so let's go straight to the gender 
I just have to speed that up adding text and labels and combo box shouldn't be of a problem to you guys okay coming here that's going to be female then male there we go and here for the course let's see let's come right down here where is it I think it's right here so for the course I'm going to enter the following just speed that up as well I'm gonna grab that there and the text content on that I'm going to enter that select the course and right here this very one here let's get them all centered the numbers up and down bring it down and where is it a line and get it centered okay and right over here let's add some data in here make sure it's selected now where is the property click on the properties and I'm just going to enter in there maybe mother father and so on there and that's it so the interface the design of the interface is completed so let's run it and see how that's going to look like and as for these ones I just change those one to all you need to do is to come in here and where is it and just enter yes or no okay this let's delete that and you see how it's done select that again come back in here and there and the default value that I have in there is no there okay the default value will always be no so in there what you need to do is make sure it's selected and to go straight to the text here and just enter no then you go straight into the item item collection click on that enter no and yes so the default value is no and that is it done for that one let's see yeah, I click on ok yeah I did and let's see the oh the default value no it's in the wrong place there we go that is it all done so let's run it and before I run it I'm actually going to build it and then once it's successful then I will run it there we go the building is successful so we can then run the program now running the program it's coming up and there we go guys that is how the design of the interface is looking right now however nothing is happening now what I'm going to do now guys is I'm going to exit out and let's go to the tool so that we can now uh, install the SQL so click select tools and let's come right here you see where we have new get package manager select the package manager this very one click on that and we now click on the browse this very one here click on browse and in there let's enter my SQL there we go okay I'm going to select this very first one because it seems like it's the most downloaded so let's click on that and here you see where we have project and the name of my project just make sure it's checked then click on install there now I'm gonna click on OK here and we also need to accept the license agreement there we go okay it's finished installing the the package so that is fine but before I go any further one thing I like to do is I'm going to go to my SQL workbench 
this very one here and let's create a table so first of all before creating that very database I'm going to click on the schema here and let's just get I'm just gonna give it a simple name I'm gonna call it SDB S database or just S data the S stands for student data okay that's it you can call yes whatever you like I just call it S data and click on apply to create that and click on apply again click on finish and if I scroll down here I should be able to see the SDB somewhere here okay I'm gonna click on my SDB database there so that I can create a table that is the table right click on the table and select create table and I'm just gonna give it the same name as the database and that is it so you see this double head arrow drop it down and right here the column let's enter as follows the very first one is going to be student ID and the student ID I'm going to leave it as an uh, the data type as integer primary key make sure that is checked it shouldn't be empty and it must be unique and right underneath I'm going to enter first name then we have surname in total I'm going to have about 39 columns now the next one is going to be address gender and here I'm going to have date of birth mobile number and let's add the email address as well there we go then underneath here I'm going to include course then uh, we have course code that should be course code yeah and the next one is home student then we have overseas student right we have accommodation yeah that is fine and um, what is exchange in total like I said is going to be 39 fields so I may have to just speed this up then we have scholarship and the degree BA BSC don't do that BSC MA MFC and a PhD there we go and I'm now going to take care of the various models so yeah that'll be model model one let's copy model model two model three four five six seven and model eight there we go all right what about this course or the grades I'm just gonna call it scores so that's going to be score number one all right score two for each of the models score three four five six seven eight there and we'll have total score here we have ranking ranking and date see I'm not gonna bother with the different data data uh, different uh, data type you can always change it anyway so it's no big deal I'm just gonna leave it like that in total there's 30 nine fields there so I'm now going to click on apply 
so let's verify it yep this 39 that is correct now click on apply again and that is it my database is ready so let's come back into or go back straight into our program here okay so i've finished with the new gate i can always close that anyway so let's scroll right down just double click on the form all right before i go any further i'm going to have to import the following library so let's go for import that will be microsoft dot application server or services here and there okay so that should actually be right on top of the public let's go right up here yeah all right that's good so the next one is let's say import microsoft dot let's say win 32 there we go and import mysql dot data dot mysql client and there you need all of those imported okay now that those are all in place the next thing we want to do is let's say dim declare by sql con as new my sql connection this connection there there and i'm also going to let's say dim my sql command that's my variable as new my sql command let's see might as well just type it my sql command there we go so let's grab hold of the reader name sql r d s my sql data reader okay provide the table sql dt as new data table there we go and i'm also going to declare SQL query and string. Okay. Okay, the other components that we need is uh, an adapter. So I'm going to let's just say Lim DTA as new my sql data adapter there all right and i have all my components in so now let's create out the de declare as follows again dim server as string and my server is known as local local host there what about username let's say dim username as string as well and that is going to be root that you will see on your web workbench my SQL workbench now my password my password is just one two three four five anyway 
that will be equals one two three four five that's my password and finally the name of my database dim database as spring and the database is called s data if you guys can still recall undo that undo that it's called s data there and that is the database right there s data all done so have a good look at this okay have a good look at that i've just increased the font size a little bit just zoom out there now the next thing we want to do that i'm going to do right now is right underneath here i'm just going to create a public function let's grab all of this and just delete something there and this public function okay this is my public function let's say private sub let's say update date data there that is the name of my function and inside this function I want it to connect so I'm going to say my SQL connect dot connect so let's say dot connection string connection string and that is equals the server okay I think there's something missing here server yeah that is correct yeah and that will be equals server plus then you then enter quote and enter semicolon cop out of that and add the other one and this time around that is my username so I can just say username or user yeah username that will be equals plus user name and plus there. now let's come out of there and space underscore that is more or less like a carriage return press enter and the next one is going to be plus the password and that is equals password as well plus password plus and plus the database and the database is database this better one here there we go so this is the function that I'm going to call using form load okay but well let's just finish it up anyway so we now want the SQL connector we want it to open dot open enter parenthesis and we then want sql command dot connection connection that is equals sql con okay now we say sql command dot command type 
no text dot command text that is equals sql that would be select sql statement select from s data as the name of my database okay i've just entered an sql statement that will select from sql data okay now that that is done let's grab hold of the reader we want the reader we want the data we also want we just want these two anyway so let's grab the reader skill reader equals sql command dot execute reader now say sql data table dot we want you to load sql reader now sql reader has to be closed once we finish loading up close and we also need to close the connectors here this very one dot close and after that we need to now get hold of our to populate whatever we have straight into the data grid view so let's come right down here and say data green view one dot data source that will be equals the sql table this very one there that is it all taken care of all right that is fine so this very function i'm going to call that function straight inside the form load okay copy that function let's come in here double click on the form and let the form load that up for me there we go okay since we are in form load i'm going to do something you see this all of these text box here i'm going to disable them this very one so but first of all i just want to run it and make sure there's no error okay the build is successful so let's click on run there we go so far there's no error okay you see all of these text box i'm going to disable them using the form load so only when you click on select select a subject here will they be enabled so let's exit out and right inside my form load so let's go straight to the form load itself and right underneath here i'm just going to enter txt score one dot enable equals false okay let's just copy that for the others there are eight in total and copy again then we change the change the coordinates so all the numbers that is two three four five six seven and eight there that is that taken care of so if we run it, every single one of those text box should be disabled by now. There we go, right there. So nothing is happening. Like I said, when you select a subject here, that's only when you'll be able to enable it. Okay, so exit out. And let's add some subjects in here. Okay, I'm going to try and speed that up. 
So select that and go straight to the properties. Click, make sure you select the items and click on the three dot here. Then the very first one, I'm going to leave a space in there. Just call that Visual C++ Programming. And the second one is going to be, let's go for C Sharp. Let's say Python programming. There we go. That is taken care of. So let's take care of the next one and the others. There. Make sure it's selected. Go straight to the property and select item collection. Click on that. Enter a space. And the next one is going to be as follows. There. And so on. Okay. I'm going to speed up the others and get back to you since you guys understand how it's done now. Okay. All done. Let's run it and see how it's going to look like. Right there, guys. So let's try it out. There we go. That is it. So it's fine. It's working the way we want it okay that is good so I'm going to close that so let's come down here and take care of the exit button so double click on the exit there okay and in, inside the exit the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a variable that I call I exit as dialog results that should be dialog results. Let's initialize it as follows. So I'm going to say message box dot show the following. Confirm if you want to exit. That is the first argument. So the second argument is going to be make sure you enter a comma. The second argument that will be the name of my system. So I'm going to call the student management system. And the third argument that is going to be one of the build in message box buttons dot. I'm gonna go for yes or no. There. Let's come down here so that you guys can see what I'm up to. There we go. Message box button. Then the fourth argument is going to be a message box icon. The icon that I wanted to show, I'm gonna select a question. There we go that is the icon that is it done so let's use an if statement now if i exit is equals dialog result dialog result dot yes then we just want the application exit application dot exit enter parenthesis that is it taken care of from here down here that is my exit I prefer it this way because it does prompt the user to confirm if they want to exit or not so let's run it and see how that works try that out no I don't want to exit yes I do want to exit right so that is fine. So, okay then, the next thing we want to do is to take care of the reset button. So let's come bring that down here, double click on the reset. No, that's the re result button, I want the reset button. Double click on that. So right inside the reset button here, I'm going to use a for loop. Let's say for 
each control as control in panel one dot controls so every single text box in that panel one I want to get rid of it so I'm going to say if the type if the type of control is text box then I want this to happen control dot text equals clear there we go that is fine I also want the gender to be clear because I am dealing with the first one this very panel here so let's say CBO gender dot text that to be equals clear as well okay panel one that I'm referring to I'm going to show it to you guys right here this is it that is panel one selected and if you come right down here and there that is it panel one okay let's take care of the next one here this very one okay and that is supposed to be panel number two let's go back in here so i'm just going to copy everything we have in here to grab it all paste that change that to panel two that's panel two taken care of the only bit that i need to take care of separately will be the the course so there that is fine I also have panel number three. Paste that in there and change that to panel three. There. And in the case of panel three, I also have in there combo box. I have text box and I have combo box in there. So I'm going to first of all let's get rid of this that's for panel number three now we need one for the combo box paste that in there and change the object straight to combo box there we go and this is panel number three and the combo box I don't want to change the data, get rid of the data and the text here. I want to change all of that to zero anyway. Why the combo box will be empty. So that is where I have my the models and the scores. Okay. So this is these are the text box that display the text that display the result and this is the model with every single units all right that is fine so the next one we want to take care of is let's take care of number four so come right down here there we go panel number four panel number four include combo box and that is where we have yes or no on each combo box so i'm going to change this get rid of this I'm going to change this to no good and we have panel number five in the case of panel number five we have zeros there we go and that's a combo box as well and change this one to five there right there is one more panel and that is meant to be panel number seven so i'm going to show you guys the different panels the way they've been laid out 
So for panel number seven, that is a text box. That's where we have the the guidance and so on. So we can just grab this. Anyone with the text. So yeah, that is there we go. Grab that and bring it right down here. There. That is panel number seven. And there's one there's one combo box inside panel number seven, so and that is meant to be the guidance. So let's come down here. CBO guidance dot text equals clear. There. So I think I have completed the resets. Yep. So have a good look at the lines of code panel one, panel two, panel three. There's two different objects in panel three, text box and combo box. Then we have panel four, panel five and panel number seven. There. So let me show you guys each panel. Save that first. Come here. Now this is panel number two here that is selected already. That is two. And here this is my panel number three. Select that. That's panel three with a combo box and a text box. This is panel number four here. There we go. And panel number five. And right here is panel number seven. There, those are the panels that I've just finished addressing. So let's run it and you guys see how it all works. Well, before I run it, I'm going to get rid of this zero inside panel number seven. So, okay, so let's run it now. Run. There we go guys, so decision time, so let's see how it's going to work. Alright. And reset. Oh, let's try this ones as well. And this ones. Let's change them all to yes. Yes, yeah. And just enter some values here. Okay, try that out. There we go. Apart from this one. Okay, we need to reset this one as well. Back to zero. This is panel number five. Okay, let's go back in there. Let's be sure of that. So back in here, that's panel number five, and let's look for panel five. That is panel five. It's not a combo box, it is a number. Okay, that's the number. number up and down let's see okay and do that let's go grab the name scroll right here and where is it oh this is the one and that is it yeah numeric up and down that is it right there Okay, so let's go back in there. That should be numeric. Numeric up and down. There. So that should take care of that. All right, let's save and run it one more time. Run. All right, try that out. Enter some value in there. Reset. There we go. 
and that is it it's fine it's working fine there we go and this panel number two because panel number two should always have this okay so I'm gonna change that so I'm gonna copy that because if I click on that it does get rid of that as well so let's go in there check out panel number two right and that is it in here okay just come in here paste that in there that is it so that should take care of panel number two as well run okay we're going to try to reset again and click on reset there we go okay now that the reset is working as we want let's have a go at the result for this very calculation here so first of all let's exit then after that we'll take care of this very one okay so let's go back in there and click on result i think i have that here somewhere that is the result the button for result okay so for the new guys all you need to do is just double click on that very button let me show it to you and right here double click on the button and that will take you straight to the procedural area so I double click on it there we go right there now to start with the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to declare the following so I'm going to call it unit and this unit is going to be an array all right and I will also declare another one I'm going to call that unit total okay let's declare it as an integer anyway integer there we go now for each of those units I'm going to start array always start from zero so I'm going to say units zero that will be equals to the following as an integer txt score one dot text yeah that's the very first one okay now the next one is going to be Score two and so on, and that is going to be unit one. Score is two, and just for your information, if you don't enter integer here, you can also say convert dot to int thirty two. Okay, it's going to work exactly the same way, All right? So I just decide to put as an integer that which means whatever you have inside this text box is automatically converted to an integer and if you notice my data type here is an integer well i believe you guys get that so i'm just going to leave it let's be consistent with the way it is as integer or we can leave it as convert to int 32 whichever you guys can use that so copy that paste that in here now the next one so in total is eight so this will be two three four five six seven and that's it eight okay zero one two eight now this one is three four five six seven and eight all right that is it all done so i now want my total i can even use int eight Let's use int 8 to store everything int 8 or unit 8 sorry I said int 8 unit 8 equals 
add as follows so I'm going to add everything that we have in here so that is going to be zero plus the next one that is one and plus that is two and so on so I'm gonna grab all of this copy and just paste it here there let's add two more okay I'm gonna put it in a bracket so this is two this will be three four five six and seven okay so I've added every data that we have in here straight in here so all we then need to do is we now need to store everything into LBL total is very total score there dot text equals unit eight and that is it there we can even convert this to a string character so to do it because it's here is always string so you can just say convert let's put a bracket there first convert dot to string whatever is in here is converted to string and stored right in here okay so I'm going to run it which means I'm not I don't have any need for this anymore get rid of that I'm gonna run it now but before I run it because I I have disabled the buttons so let's come right here you see these ones for now they are all disabled so I'm just going to comment it all out I will enable it later on so let's run it to make sure this works and the answer is displayed right in here okay let's run that there we go so let's try that out if I click on this that should give me zero supposing we have some value in here so that should officially be 400 there we go okay it's working as expected so let's put some condition here that if this equals 700 plus first class and so on and the date as well we need to take care of the date so exit out and uh, where is the commented bit okay I'm gonna leave that for just for for a while and because I also want the date to be displayed I'm going to say LBL date dot that will be equals months months yeah month calendar one dot select start dot I'm gonna make that long long dates this very one here so the date should automatically be displayed in here when I click on this all right and at the same time supposing we want to change the dates I'm gonna copy that we want if we want to change the date of uh, the qualification grading we can always come in here and just double click on the month calendar double click on it and add as follows there okay so let's save and just run that and see how that's gonna look like run okay let's try this out again let's say he's a first class student let's enter 90s and above there click on result there we go today's dates total and the ranking we need to specify the ranking assuming we want to change the date of this grading just double click on that there we go you don't even need to double click just click it click on it once that's it 
and you change that right away let's see if this one this is not doing anything because those are just the weeks all right that is fine okay now let's continue I'm now going to go back to my to the results btn result button there now we then need to find out the grading all right as for the grading let's come right down here and just let's do this we can let's add it up here we can say if unit 8 is greater than and equals to 700 then lbl ranking dot text equals so this is meant to be a first class student we just enter first class first class right there there we go that's all there is to it now the other conditions is let's assume if it's less than 600 so in there we say else if if it's equals to greater than and equals to 600 that would be second class upper 2 dot i upper now copy this again using an if statement again the next condition is 500 greater than and equals to 500 that would be second class lower and the next condition if is greater than and equals to 400 that is going to be third class and the next condition here if is less than and equals to 3 greater than and equals to 300 that is going to be certificate of higher education and the final condition is let's say less than and equals to 299 that unfortunately would be a fail there that is it guys I've just finished taking care of the result buttons okay let's go back up here let me show you guys the results again just have a good look at it bring it down there I'm gonna run it now run and we just enter some values and see how that's gonna work so if we click on that that is a fail as you can see that is a fail right there and let's add some value in there let's see what class he belongs to and result second class lower all right that is good but if i enable this okay we need this to enable this very one so i'm going to exit out let's go back to my form load if you guys can still recall i actually commented out the the function that disables the, uh, the text box so let's select it and take care of that so make sure it's selected and come up here just get rid of that now i've enabled i've enabled the or i've disabled the text box so if i run it now run we wouldn't be able to enter any data onto the te text box let's see there we go that is it we cannot enter any data so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put together a line of code to enable this so if you click on that it's just going to be zero so we will use this combo box to enable this let's exit let's make sure the reset works yep and oh the reset is not working for these ones so we need to take care of that as well 
so let's do the reset force come right down here okay let's double click on the reset so that we can take care of those three variables maybe we can just place that right underneath here lbl total the text equals clear so that's the very first one let's copy that lbl ranking day lbl dates and there that is the reset for those three labels taken care of save that now let's take care of this combo box i want to use this, this combo box to enable this text box so i'm going to double click on this very combo box here and right here using an if statement if this very combo box is called cbo model dot text if is equals nothing then what i want the system to do is txt score one dot text will be equals zero and at the same time txt score one dot enable that will be equals false else txt score one dot enable equals true that's all there is to it done that is it all done guys that's for the very first one i'm going to copy that and just use that for the others okay let's see if we can get hold of uh, number two here okay number two is not responding let's go back there and just click on it double click on number two model number two is coming up there we go that's model number two paste that in there and just change the names to two two and two here there we go all done that is number one that's number two okay let's move this up so that you guys can see it all right now the next one let's go take care of the next one that's number three Paste that in here and just change that to three. There we go. Number four. Double click on number four and repeat exactly the same thing. Paste. Changes to four. There we go. Number five. Double click on number five. Paste change that to five back on the design view double click on number six paste that is six now we need to take care of seven eight double click on seven paste seven seven and seven here now number eight double click on number eight and let's take care of that too eight eight here eight here and fine and finally eight there as well that is it taken care of so let's run it save that first click on run okay let's try that out as you can see it's all disabled so if we select any subject here there we go so we can enter data in there straight away okay but one thing i want to do is if i click on this i want this to automatically just delete whatever value we have in there so we can do that here as well let's enter something in here and the other thing is there's going to be error if we if we can enter characters so we'll take care of that in a short while so let's see what's gonna happen with these ones i've just entered 
there. There we go. All right, that is looking good. Okay, reset. There we go. That is it. And with the reset, we are able to dis. We are able to disable every single text box. Now that that is done, let's take care of this because. As you guys notice, we were able to enter just anyhow characters in here, so I want to prevent that from happening. So I'm going to use an event. The event is known as key press. So let's do that. Select all of these. There's one more to be selected. There. Okay, as you can see, I've selected every single text box in here. I'm now going to go straight into the properties, click on the properties and we change it to events. That is the event there. Click on that. And once the event is selected, you now need the events called key press. Inside key press, I'm just going to enter numbers only. Okay, that is the name I intend to call it. Press enter. It's coming up. There we go. With the numbers only, all we then need to just do is I'm going to use if ASCII dot Keisha is not equals to eight, then if the ASCII is greater than forty eight, let's grab all of these and let's put that in here. Less than forty eight. I mean not greater than it has to be less than or let's say ASCII this should be ASCII here as a problem when you copy sometimes or the ASCII is less than 57 okay less uh, greater than 57 I mean not less than greater than 57 then then e dot handle that will be equals true so for the apps key character 48 that is 0 57 that will be 9 there and that is it. That's all there is to it. So that will prevent the end user from entering any value in there. If I run it now, this is what you guys will see. Okay, I'm going to select and I will use, let's use the on screen keyboard here. So click in here and I can enter any numeric value in here. Okay, but let's assume I want to enter a character. You see, that's impossible. Let's try this one with character. You see that? That is impossible. That's the purpose of the ASCII. But we can enter value. One of the things that you guys can see is, you see, I'm able to enter numbers greater than 100. And that is not right. So, you see, that is not right. We need to prevent the end user from entering numeric values that are greater than 100. So let's do that. So what I'm going to do is, you see right in here, I'm going to add an if statement to prevent the user from entering numeric value greater than 100. If you enter any value greater than 100, it will default back to zero. So let's exit out and go back to the result double click on the result so right in here uh, let's kind of like paste it above here i'm going to say if if txt score one dot text is greater than 100 then txt score one dot text change that straight back to zero and that's all there is to it. So I'm going to copy that for the others. Copy, paste, paste. Okay, this is two, three. No, that's two as well. We have three here, three, 
four and four there so that's for the first four text box so the others this is eight seven six five there we go that is it taken care of using an if statement okay let's come in here this is the button inside the result button I've entered the validation that will take care of anything greater than 100 there we go and right underneath here that's where the calculation is taking place there and that is as me finish with the result itself the result button so let's try that out save it first run there we go click on that there if I decide to enter anything greater than 100 as soon as I leave nothing is happening until I click on total let's see that okay click on result there we go that's it so they all defaulted back to zero so clear that that is fine now what is left for us to do is you see here anytime I enter a data in here and I click on this I want that to automatically you know just clear this and the cursor is right in there so let's take care of that okay let's go straight to design view now to take care of that I'm going to select all of these again there and let's go to the properties here I'm going to change the event now the event I I'll be using will be mouse click okay let's scroll right down let's come in here we need mouse click there we go that's mouse click there so the choice is yours to give it a name I'm just gonna call it click text box so when you click on text box so that is mouse click is coming up is building the procedural area there we go so in there let's declare the following dim t as text box okay and t is going to be sender we're going to be using sender anyway so we say t dot text equals empty t dot focus there we go that's all to that now the next one that we want to use is I'm going to use supposing when you click on there you enter a value once it's focused supposing you did not enter a value I'm going to show you guys what I'm talking about so let's run it first and you see how it works there we go so select a unit there we go once I click on this there that disappears and I've decided not to enter any value in there okay I just moved away nothing is entered if I click on this that will give me an error straight away you see that so to prevent that this is what we're going to do we're going to go back in here make sure it's still all selected and let's go straight to the properties inside the properties who we'll now want to use another method called mouse leaves so let's look for mouse leave in here mouse leaves there we go right here so with the mouse leaves I'm just gonna call it M leave okay that's fine just give it whatever name you want to call it I'm gonna call it M leaves all right inside M leaves I will click on that to open up the procedural area that is the procedural area this is just an ordinary name 
so if the mouse leaves and nothing there so i'm going to create another variable just paste that in there and if using an if statement if t no yeah it's a t if t dot text equals empty when the mouse leaves then we want t dot text to default back to zero there we go that's all there is to it so that will take care of that error or prevent that error from happening look at it just those simple lines of codes now let's run that run there we go try it all out now there okay click mouse leaves you see that click mouse leave click mouse leave only when you add the data into it nothing will happen then all right that is fine reset that's good okay guys let's take care of the odd so what's going to happen is when i click on this button now we expect all of the data to be added straight onto the database Okay, let's do that. I'm going to exit out first. Yeah. And let's go straight to that very button. Double click on add button. Okay, what I want is for the SQL connect, this very one here, dot connection dot connection string I would like you to connect with the server I do have a server right up there server and that will be equals server okay if you guys want to see that if you can still recall right at the beginning those are the declarations so I want it to connect to server username password and that I can even let me just copy them and I'll delete what I want all right I want you to connect to the server so there they are guys okay we have written out we've asked it to connect to the server so I'm gonna get rid of that now so connect to the server that will be we say plus server so get rid of that we don't need that anymore Remember, they are all global variables. So we've connected to the server. We now want to connect to the other three here. The password, username, and the database. All right. So the next one is going to be, let's enter plus sign plus. Enter a quote and a semicolon here. And out then enter a plus sign the next connector that we want to be engaged with is going to be the plus uh, the username there and the username itself is going to be equals and plus username that is my variable that I declared right up there that I've just shown to you guys so it's a plus the next one is going to be so that you guys can see it let's bring this one here and just space underscore card courage return the next one is going to be for the password I'm gonna grab the password and just place the password here so plus password that will be equals plus password and there we go password is also added then semicolon and plus the next one and the final one that is the database cut that off add a database here there the database should be in quote as well specifying what we want 
and plus database there so there should be an underscore here that's why it seems to have an error here space underscore and that error should be gone see that so because I'm continuing All right so let's use try cache try let's say SQL connect dot I would like you to open enter parenthesis there and my SQL query if you guys can still recall all of these are right up there equals I like you to insert into my database that I call S data I believe that is the name of the database let's have a second look at it let's take that up where is it and that is it it's called S data student data S data okay connect to S data and the following that I want you to connect in there is going to be as follows student ID those are the fields inside my database at my SQL workbench so the next one is surname then I have the address comma I do have a gender there I have date of birth comma uh, let's say plus so that we have enough room plus mobile yeah comma email comma no it should be a comma we have the course then we have comma we have course course code and we then have home student after that we have overseas student yeah there we go after the overseas student we have accommodation comma we also have the we have exchange let's come down here and just enter student exchange there I think it's called exchange exchange comma then I have scholarship no right so those are the personal data of the student all entered now let's enter the different types of degree we have BA comma BSC we have that should be a comma then we have MA comma we have MSC and then we have finally have PhD there we go now let's enter the models we have eight of those model number one so might as well copy this Module 2, Module 3, Module 4. Okay, we have Module 4, comma, we have Module 5, 6. That should be 7, we have 6 here. 6. Get rid of this. All right, let's make sure. All right, then we have it. And 
after that we then have the scores the first score that is score number one I called it score one let's copy that then we have score two score three seems to be too fast for myself score number four score five six then let's put a comma here then we have score number seven and get rid of this one we have seven and we have eight score number eight okay after that we then have total score itself comma ranking comma and we then finally we have date so I've just added all my all of my data in here now okay every single fields that I intend to use or that I'll, I'll be using in total that should be 39 okay that is it so the other thing where we need to add would be the every single components but just for all of these fields that I've added if you guys want they are all right here those fields should be on your database okay those are the fields in my database on each column there we go I've just added all of that as you can see now we now need to add this ones every single components that we have in here the ones that we don't add we include the parents or the guidance details and Dean of Faculty why do I have two I need to change that Dean of Faculty and uh, I will add the course code and the and the course itself all right so this one is meant to just be the faculty so let's change that to faculty well, let's come in here first get rid of that there we go okay we have so like I said the only bit that we add would be the course course code and every other thing guiding details will not be added so let's go back to our add function double click on the add button now to add the values okay the values to be added that we include as follows so the first one is going to be the student ID so let's come down here and just say value value open a bracket and very first value that will be plus txt student id dot text so that's my very first value added oh look look here get rid of that there should be only one there okay then we say plus quotes and apostrophe comma apostrophe and right here we then need to add plus yeah so let's just copy these ones now that that is done the next one is going to be txt first name there we go paste that makes life easy dot text dot text 
think they are out of text, so I might as well just copy all of these. And then it's going to be followed by txt surname. Paste. That makes life easy. That's good. There. All right, so I've got three values in. So now let's go to the next line. Press enter. And I'm going to go for the address now. Address that's txt, txt address paste. That's good. And follow by. I do have gender here, so in case of gender, that's CBO gender. Paste. Nice one. Then we have TXT date of birth. And now let's go for the mobile phone. Mobile, no, TXT. TXT and paste. Press enter. So the next one now. Let's move this here so that you guys can see it properly. Mobile phone is in. We then have TXT emails. There. After the email. Course. CBO course. Paste. Then TXT course code. Paste. Alright. We have TXT course code. Then we have CBO. CBO home student and paste. I think I should bring this down. There. Okay, looking good. Alright, I don't want to just speed it up as such because of my, some of my beginners there that are learning from this. Okay. So let's go for the next one here is going to be CBO, I believe. CBO overseas students. CBO overseas students. Paste. Then CBO accommodation. Paste. Yeah, that's correct. Press enter. Then we have CBO exchange student. And CBO scholarship. No. Yes, CBO. That will be scholarship. Yeah. There. Okay, that is that all done. The next one is the number up and down. I'm gonna put those ones underneath here. Number up and down. So let's say N. Yeah, that's the first one. Dot text. N. B S C. Paste. N. MSC and NUB MSC MA okay MA yeah NUD MSC paste then we have NUD PhD and paste okay going out of the range and there, so that you guys can see it properly. 
Okay, so that's the first one. I'm almost done. So the next lot that is going to be my models. CBO model, model one. That's good. Paste. So in the case of these, I can just copy this. This one is just models. So we change that to two. Two. Three. Six, seven, eight. So module is taking care of a six, no six, seven, and eight. There, the eight modules are all there now. Okay, now we now want to take care of txt scores. So the first one is going to be txt score number one. Score number one, grab all of these. Paste. That's this one. So I'm going to copy. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so that is number two. Change this to two. Three, four, five, six, seven. For those of you who understand what's going on, you can just speed up, just speed along. So this is for those who are beginners in using database. All right, that is fine. So we now need two more, just three more actually. First one is going to be LBL. Copy that. LBL total score. Paste. LBL ranking. Paste. And finally, LBL date. There we go. All done. And that is all there is to it. So what we need to now do is enter a bracket here to close up everything. Get rid of this. And that is it. Okay. That is how you add your fields and the values straight into each cell. That's it. Done. Okay, because I've used try and what is going to be the condition if things fails or if things didn't go accordingly. And if it, if things go accordingly, what's going to happen? So I'm going to first of all do something here. So underneath here we will say, let's see, SQL, SQL command that is equals new my sql new my sql command and my sql command is going to take in the following values query comma and connections as well there we go now Let's get the system SQL to read it. SQL equals SQL command dot execute the reader. There. All done. Now, we need to close up the connections. Come right down here. Dot close. No, not clone, close. Enter parenthesis. That's fine. 
supposing there's an issue. So that's where I get a message box. Message box dot show. Let's say x dot message. Get that from the system. Comma. Um, MySQL system? No, just a student system that will be the title. Student database. Student database. Student database, comma, message box button dot OK. Dot OK, comma, message box icon. I'm going to use that of information for it. Icon. That will be dot information. All right. So that will be the information sign that you guys will see on the system. All right. That is fine. And finally, if things goes accordingly, we then want as follows. So right underneath here, we're going to then say finally. Let's do that now. Press enter. Finally, we want it to MySQL connect dot dispose. There. Okay. Then we also need to update. Once it's updated, I'm going to need a system to kind of like display a message. So I'm going to grab all of these again. Let's grab my message box that I've written. Copy that. Come right down here. And just enter the, the function created earlier. It's called update database. Update date data. Okay. Update date data. Is that what I call it? That's strange. So we'll come down here and paste. Let's check that out. But before then, I'm going to get rid of this because that is just supposed to be a message there. So the message is going to be record. Let's say added successfully. There we go. Now that is it all done. A lot of typing there. So let's come right up here. I just want to check. Oh, it's called update, update data. Okay, that's fine. So that's the name that I've called in here. All right, that is fine. Maybe just break this into two so that you guys can see it. There. Okay, I'm going to take it up so that you see the codes. That is my add function. Bring it down. Okay, there yeah, you should be able to see it now. Down a little bit. There. And that is it. That's the art function. So we're going to have to try that out to make sure it works as expected. Okay, before I try it out, let me take care of this combo box that will display the following information here. You see this uh, course combo box. I'm going to double click on that. Double click on that. And right in here, I'm going to start by using an if statement. If the data that is entered inside this combo box, the course combo box, the text, if it's equals to select a selected course. there then i want you to clear all of the following txt cost code dot text equals clear let's clear those now the next one is txt now let's go for the next one that's faculty there and T 
TXA Dean. That's for the Dean of Faculty, clear that. Then TXA Program Leader. Program Leader, clear. And TXT Course Tutor, clear. Alright, so if this is selected, all of this should be cleared. Else, okay, come down here. Else, if if this grab from this, paste that here. If the data in here happens to be, let's say. BSC Serious Games Then all of these the following should appear grab all of these paste that in here and change the data in there so the cost code will be BSC Let's make that up zero zero nine then the school school of computing school of computer games okay and the professor the dean of faculty that's professor Danny more house program leader let's say professor peter packer and course leader or course tutor doctor Sammy out. Let's say Sammy South end. That is it. Done. So I'm going to try this out because I can just speed this up. Okay. So run. Okay, guys. Let's try that out. Select serious games. There we go. Look at that. And let's select. So let the course serious games all right let's see if we're going to be able to add all of this information straight into a database as an home student um yep okay no it's an home student so it's a scholarship and let's say it's third year taking the following oh we need to enter some data in here up a little bit and there we go there we can add that click on result we now want to add is personal details and let's assume the name is Tony Montana and address number 17 Little Venice Mail Date of Bed and right here there email let's say it's gmail.com and guidance that's the mom I say that's Grace Montana Montana and confirm your email address there we go okay if this is working when I click on add I should be able to see all of this information here so and I should also be able to see the data right in here so let's give it a try like whoa it's working that's nice 
That's nice. Let's see. That is Tony Montana's details. I'm very excited about this. That is very good. All right. And uh, let's check the database itself. Let's go into the table. And uh, there we go. I can say it. There, there we go. Those are the details of Tony Montana on the table. Guys, this tutorial has been a success. So I'm very happy with that. So that's that's fine. So one other thing is just one last thing now is we need to populate all of this condition here. Okay, I'm just gonna copy and paste. And the other thing is if I reset, I'm gonna be able to come in here, double click on all of these, and every single data here should appear here apart from this very one and this one. So I'm going to show you guys how to get that done. But well, first thing first, let's copy this and just speed things up. So copy the data and just paste it right underneath here and get it modified. There we go. There they are, guys. I finished with the modification. So there we go, guys. Look at that. All right. So that is the combo box depend on the condition selected and there we go all right that is it all done it's exactly the same lines of code I only change the names around that's all there is to it now finally let's come in here you see this very let's come in right here data review there so the 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 function for that is going to be cell click. So let's double click on it. Let's just select it. Go to the properties here. And right in here, we want to select an event. This event has to be cell click, this very one here. So I'm going to double click on that. It's coming up. There we go. So first, first of all, let's start by saying try cache whatever error that I might run into txt no no txt txt of student id dot text that will be equals equals data grid view one no data grid view one this very one here dot select selected row and this very row is going to be represented by zero dot cell lowercase dot cell dot value and this value is going to be string character dot value dot to string right I think there's an error so let's check okay the cell should be cell zero there no no stop that come out of it there we go yeah that is killed that so that's the first one the second one is going to be first name so copy first name surname address so let's change this one to first name surname here address and this will become zero okay this will become one one here two three okay then the next one is for the gender so let's change this one to cbo gender okay in the case of cbo gender so that is fine this will be four there that will be four okay guys you get that so I'm going to speed up the rest okay it's exactly the same thing that I'm doing all I'm just doing is just repeating it over and over again 
this one is for date of birth and this will be five so i'm going to copy all of these paste and change things around there so let's speed that up that is it guys all done now okay as you can see it's all the same lines of codes okay bring it down okay and all that is then left to do is if there's any error display the following message message box dot show i'll just show a message within the system that, that's it done and that's all there is to it so i'm going to save that and let's run this system so let's go back up here okay and bring it down to my data de uh, function declaration form load exit result as the result again there then we have the reset function there that's the reset done and that is for the calendar then we have module 1 module 2 module 3 module 4 module 5 module 6 module 7 and module 8 then we have numbers only and those two functions add new data there we go then we have the selector course selector here and there we go guys have a good look at that there then we have cell click on the data preview and that is all there is to it guys I'm now going to run my program and we can call it the end of this project run okay guys to test the combo box out that is the combo box there okay but I, if I click on this I should be able to see all of these data apart from the ones that are not in this on the system here there we go look at that reset go back in there double click there okay and let's assume we want to enter new students details so I'm just going to change that to maybe information and in here change the student ID else there will be an error and the name happens to be Sally Jackson and Sally Jackson leaves number 11 Hall Road female 1999 9 and here is 0 02 telephone number there and here that's Sally guidance dad and in here name of dad is let's say is John Jackson then Jackson leaves right here phone number of John Jackson and email of JJ paste and confirm that there so all we then need to do now is just to click on add if you look inside our data review details of John Jackson is not there come right here click on add successful click on ok there we go guys look at that 
And if you come in here, that's the details of John Jackson. And let's check out our database. Click on the database. Jackson, uh, John Jackson is not there. Click on re uh, just refresh the database. Click on that. There we go. That's John Jackson right there. Or Sally Jackson actually. The father's name is John Jackson. And that's all the restores. So with that, guys, I'm gonna call it the end of this very beautiful and advanced tutorial. And it's ideal for the graduate final projects. So with that, I'm gonna say bye for now. And please do subscribe to my channel, and you can also join to become a member. There's a lot of benefits if you're a member. You all have a nice day now. And bye for now, guys.